morning, friends, and welcome to This Day Devo. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, you are doing an incredible job. If you're staying the course with me, if you're jumping back in, if you're feeling up and down, like if you have days when you have to read through an entire week at a time and pick up on a video whenever you're able to or want to, uh, hey, hey, just be proud of yourself that it's Cinco de Mayo. It is May 5th. And you're still reading the New Testament. Uh, this is a year-long journey. has its challenges, but you're staying the course. Or you're picking it back up. Either way, we're making progress, right? Progress, not perfection. Jesus loves you because he loves you. Not for this accomplishment. He doesn't love you more or less. If you're on pace with me, he just loves you. He loves you and he wants to grow in this relationship with you. And the more you spend time in his word and in prayer and in his presence, the more, uh, and with his people, the more that you are growing and maturing in the faith and strengthening your relationship with him. So, hey, May 5th. Today we read Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 30. And again, these are things that we've read twice in in the books of Matthew and Mark. And what we read today, we'll see even more in depth when we get to the book of John, which I'm looking very much looking forward to. And in Luke, as we just enjoy his beautiful depth of his writing, uh, he takes a point to say that Satan actually enters into or it greatly influences Judas. Did you catch that? You see, Satan, this master manipulator, has been looking for an opportune time ever since uh, Jesus was tempted in the desert after 40 days of fasting. You may remember that all the way back in, I think it was Luke chapter 4, was the last time that Satan was uh, was. Uh, visibly or I guess written into the story and specifically mentioned <clears throat> throughout the course of Jesus's life and ministry, no doubt his influence has been noticed and felt and and, and been present. Uh, but it's at the end of the temptation of Jesus, it says that Satan went away and, and waiting for an opportune time. Well, that opportune time has come and that opportune person is Judas, because Judas is one of Jesus' 12 disciples, and Judas, even though he was walking intimately with Jesus, even though he was in the inner circle, even though he was uh, he was in charge of the money, right, he, he very much really never believed. He really never saw Jesus as more than a uh, a teacher, an opportunity, a, a friend, a guy. He never saw Jesus as Lord. He never saw Jesus as Messiah. He didn't get it at this point. Okay? And so he was looking for opportunities to make money. He was looking for opportunities. And, you know, he, he, he in, in John, in this same scene, it tells us that, that uh, Judas is collecting money for the poor, but he didn't actually care about the poor. It specifically says that in the scripture that he didn't really care about the poor because he is always shaving off the top. So Judas is influenced by Satan. The Pharisees are are able to, <coughs> excuse me, are able to move forward quickly with their plan faster than they thought they needed to because one from inside Jesus' ranks comes to them under the influence of Satan. And Jesus knows all along what's going on. Jesus knows all along that Judas would be the one to betray him. Jesus knows all along, all along that he is supposed to die. And yet, Jesus consistently loves not just the other disciples, not just the people he's talking to, not just the people 2,000 years ago like yourself, whom he will lay down his life for, but he consistently loves Judas. Imagine that. Even knowing all of this and seeing it unfolding firsthand before him, he invites Judas to sit beside him at the Last Supper. He invites Judas uh, to, to partake of the elements of communion with him. He washes Judas's feet, knowing full well that those very feet would be the feet that led 
the soldiers into the Garden of Gethsemane to carry Jesus out. He loved them anyway. So Jesus never gave Judas a reason to turn him in, to hate him. He always loved him. He called him friend. And so you and I, I think, are uh, will find value in remembering that we need to be cautious and keep our guards up. <coughs> Man. Because Satan is always looking for an opportune time to pull us down, to work through other people, to tempt us and to to cause us to stumble and fall off the straight and narrow. He's always looking for an opportune time to tempt you into sin. We would do ourselves favors to remember that by, by the power of God, by the Holy Spirit, to put on that armor and be protected. And we also would do ourselves a favor to remember that even in the trial and in the temptation, even in the doubt, even in the sin, even in the struggle, even in the mess up, even in the fear, Jesus' love remains. And that love is so deep that he laid his very life down for you. And that perfect love casts out all fear. That perfect love is our, uh, our Jesus paying the penalty for our sins. And so... Let's remember, Jesus still loves us. Today I learned this about Jesus, and on this day I will this. How do you feel in those blanks today? Have a good day. I am with you in the darkness. I will be your light. Every word sent down from heaven. As the power of Christ